Hey everybody and welcome back to Wizbits of Random Gaming and we didn't have a game hunt video last week but we got one for you this week and it's a big one. It's that time of year again, it's a London gaming market. Now if you like this kind of content please take the time to consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us out massively and I'll buy you a small piece of fake Lego like this if you see me out and about and mention the channel. Now this is about the fifth time that I've been to the London gaming market since its um, inception and it doesn't change too often although I must say on this occasion there was a few new store holders. Now this guy always there and he had some new stuff this month alongside some stuff that he does seem to uh, struggle to sell. Now I don't think it's because of his high prices, I think it's just finding the right buyer at the right time. That seems to be the case with these uh, higher priced items that you find within the retro gaming community. Now as always we've got some fantastic titles to be seen here today. This one, I don't collect for the Game Boy Color, but International Karate, what a fantastic series of games those were. I've been playing those titles since the Amstrad, the Commodore 64 days, and um, yeah, they hold up in my opinion. Always nice to see good condition Master System stuff as well. A system that is very dear to my heart. And a fantastic array of Saturn games here. Some of them were in absolutely amazing condition, but yes, the prices were high. But that seems to be the case for the Saturn anyway. Now, I actually work really close to the venue, and I wasn't working on this day, obviously, but a colleague of mine was, and I called him in, and he was drawn to these um, Pandora box style arcade joysticks. We'll get back to that later on. He's very much a casual gamer. Let's see if he actually makes such a purchase. Now I love these coasters, always come in handy and I always leave with at least two or three of them. I can only drink one drink at a time, but still, I've probably got about nine of them now. Now, I almost picked this up. I don't own a Master System. I would never use it. But out of nostalgia alone, I absolutely love the Master System light gun. I used it well in advance before I ever had the chance to use the Nintendo NES Zapper. And for me, the nostalgia kicks in massively with that one. Now, I really was tempted out of nostalgia for that uh, Atari Lynx bag there. Um, I left it in the end. I don't think I'd use it. But really, that's no excuse. It's never stopped me purchasing dumb things in the past. Now, looking at all of these Masters of the Universe figures, it upsets me greatly. Look at them graded. You know they're going for a very high price. I had every single one of those, apart from that Moss Man character, who is a reskin of Beast Man, essentially. Um, I think Moss Man came out at a time when I long finished buying Master of the Universe toys. But yeah, every one of those, I've got no idea where they went, but uh, my collection, if I was to manage to have maintained that, I could have sold that for a massive amount of money right about now. Was really interested in this one today, but at £25, I thought it was a little bit on the higher side for me personally. There was a huge emphasis on PlayStation 1 games today. Um, there always seems to be a theme at the London gaming market. And today I saw many, many a PlayStation 1 game. But there was some great PlayStation 2 titles as well. As you can see here, Nano Breaker at a pretty reasonable price, I would say.
Now, I remember these TVs when they were in all of your catalogs, your Argos catalogs, your Dixons, who remembers Dixons, and all those sort of shops. Um, they seem to be really highly sought after now, and I didn't see a price for that on the day. Um, I had no interest in it, so I didn't inquire, but I would imagine it went for quite a pretty penny. Now, okay, I'm gonna say it now. This might upset a few people that actually have stalls or shops or whatever, but I see a lot of game shop tours on YouTube and I go to these same shop owners' stalls and they seem to bring a lot of fodder to their stalls. Whereas I know they've got much, much more high-end items back at their shop. Now, I don't know if this is done tactically or any other reason, but it does seem to be the case with some shops, not all I must say, whereas they just bring what could be considered CEX fodder. You know those games that are on every CEX's shelves? Um, admittedly, nine times out of 10, they are in better condition, but yeah, I don't really go to the market to see these sort of things. I do occasionally pick that sort of stuff up, it's always nice to see it when it's in really good condition because we all know the CEX stuff, yeah, that stuff can be absolutely filthy at times. The staff there have got no obligation to clean items and without that obligation, they most certainly don't. Now, this was strange. Every single one of these Nintendo Switch games, code in a box. I can't imagine uh, anyone has picked one of those up on a day and purchased. People do not go to game fairs, game markets, to buy digital download codes. Now at the last market that I went to, there was some real high-end Nintendo Wii U stuff. Um, I went home with a bit of buyer's regret on a day, I didn't pick up enough of what I wanted. And so I went in today with the thought in my mind that I want to come away with a Wii U game that is not common, one that isn't seen too often. And I struggled all day to find anything other than your standard games that you see out and about. Now, one of the things that I really do love about such a games market is you see little strange things like this. A Halloween 2 action figure of Laurie Strode. 28 pound. I was really tempted by this, but I'll be honest with you. The figure inside the box was absolutely terrible. And uh, for that reason, I made, I think, the wise decision not to buy that. Um, I'm normally a sucker for that kind of thing, though. I do love the first two Halloween films, and I was drawn in as soon as I saw that. Now, something I'd like to gauge um, you guys, your opinions on this is I haven't been to a London gaming market in the last three that I've been to maybe that has been absolutely rampacked. Is this down to the new queuing system, which I think has had some sort of effect and has given us more enjoyment inside the venue so that you don't have to go around with it being completely stacked? Or have these markets peaked and are less people going to them? Now this store had some really good stuff. We've got your usual titles here, but there's some real good quality cardboard that you're about to see as well. Plus in the background there, they had a ton of Neo Geo stuff. Don't see that much Neo Geo stuff in that sort of condition too often. Some really good condition import stuff as I was saying earlier, you can see it there. It looks really good. And the Neo Geo stuff, look, there it is. That's, that is someone's collection. 
and I'd imagine very expensive. Well, just give us a little wave. And uh, Dan, are you done for today? I'm done for today. Yeah. Spent my money. Yeah. Credit card all maxed out. Yeah. Pretty but, much. <laughs> yeah. J- James would be absolutely proud of you. He would. That was Dan, one of the Ghetto Gang Discord members. Absolutely a pleasure to meet you on the day, my friend. And top man. And Dan came away with some fantastic high-end pickups. And just into reference as well as to James would be proud of you. Anyone that hasn't become a member of uh, Retro Ghetto's Discord. I was alluding to James, who's one of our top collectors in that Discord. Now, you will have seen here, I've just shown you an advertisement, essentially, for a shop called Retromania. This guy is based up north, but I tell you what, his store is fantastic. Always willing to do some sort of deal as well. Always got quality stock. And he's very different from most other game shops. I highly recommend that you check him out on socials. As he doesn't just sell games. He's got big projects going on. He runs all sorts of clubs as well for gaming. Stuff like that. And even for kids with autism. Um, what, what Gareth, I believe his name's Gareth. Correct me if I'm wrong. What he does is inspirational. Now, I still want to pick one of these bad boys up at some point. They are a little bit pricey, but I can understand as to why there's a lot of work that goes into them. And look at that Sega Nomad. I've never actually played on a Sega Nomad. Um... It screams the 90s to me when I look at it. Right, so that was my work colleague, Mike. He's had a look at that and he's now negotiating to buy one. What do we think? Did he buy one? Well, we'll have an update on that at the end of the video. Now, I do like a print. I bought a couple of that guy we just saw previously, and I was very tempted to pick up that Army of Darkness one. A very expensive Rob the Robot there. I believe that's £500. Um, I don't know what Rob the Robot goes for these days. Has the price escalated? Has it gone down? I don't know. Now, this is something you don't see every day. Lovely condition, boxed Shadow of the Beast 3. £100, probably worth it in today's market, but not something I would ever be interested in. I was tempted to pick up that OG Xbox remote control there. And a Super Scope at less than £30. Well, that's not the Super Scope, is it? That looks like some sort of Menacer. Wasn't the Menacer black? Yeah, I think I've got that one totally wrong. Nice selection of GameCube stuff here. GameCube, I feel... From what I saw anyway, was quite underrepresented on the day. Not as much as I normally see when it comes to the GameCube. Now I love flicking through random sort of things like this. A whole variety of different games. George Foreman's KO Boxing, you know, things like that. I, I love seeing those sort of memories. Terrible game, however. And again, as I was saying, I'm flipping through the Wii U stuff. I want to pick up a title to add to the collection. One that isn't seen out and about in practically every shop you go to. Creatures Raised in Space. Yeah, I'll pass on that one. IK Plus there on the Amiga CD32. 
I would imagine that's pretty much a straight port of the Amiga version, so that's got to be a good game. Hasn't it? Big hitter there. Panzer Dragoon Saga, and it was in really good condition. I don't blame them in the slightest for keeping that one well behind the counter. Now I did hear reports yesterday, unfortunately from some sellers there that some people were taking games out of the cases and even had a couple of Game Boys stolen from their desks, you know, their stalls. Um, I've never heard of that sort of behaviour at a market like this and it's a real shame to hear that. It's cheap entry to get in for a reason so that it can entice you to come in and buy not to come in and steal fighting street there on the pc engine anyone that hasn't watched uh, my most recent episode of unfinished business fighting street is essentially street fighter one i tackle that game in episode three i highly recommend you go and check that one out Some really good condition systems here and some stuff that is really unusual or not stuff that you see every day. Definitely some really nice display pieces here that I wouldn't mind picking up in the near future. I mean a 3DO for example, would I ever play it? Highly unlikely. Would I like to have one on display? Absolutely. It's the same with these items you're looking at now, these versions of the Famicom and the Nintendos and also these PC engines. I love the PC engine. I haven't played enough PC engine. I don't think I ever will play enough PC engine, but it's just such an underrated little system. Now, unless my eyes deceive me, I didn't see these guys. It's the same stall that you saw previously with those high-end items. Selling these kind of strategy books uh, any other time that I've been here. And these guys are resident. Some of these books look really, really nice. This one in particular, the Mario Brothers 2 version. I'm not a guide collector, but if I was, I would have been spending a fortune here today on what they had to offer. Nice to see Mr. Rich King Retro there back at the market. Had a quick catch up with him earlier on in the day. Also a brief glimpse of Mr. Ed Hunt there as well. Now a Wonder Swan is something I've wanted, pretty much more so for display purposes for a long time. And this guy had a really good offer on the table. Question is, was it good enough for me on the day? Now this guy's got some really, really good handhelds. There's that blue Mario that I'm after. And who would have ever thought that those Sistema little handhelds there, you see the black and the yellow one, those were really, really budget back in the day. I never thought I'd see the day where one of them was priced at 20 pound. Now this guy had an array of really good condition steel books and that Jericho one was one I was after. Unfortunately, he was taking cash only and every cash point in the area seemed to be out of money. Now this guy's got some really cool press release kits here and something I've never seen anyone selling these kind of things um, at a game market before. Some of them were very reasonably priced and some were excessively high. Um, something I would like to look at moving forward but it wasn't what I was looking for on the day and I'd already pretty much spent my mega budget by the time I discovered him.
However, it doesn't matter how much I've spent. I'm always going to be uh, intrigued and potentially going to buy tat like this. Now, there was this guy selling just at the entrance of room two. Um, he's got some really good stuff in there. Some of the sealed Nintendo Switch stuff that he had in another basket was real high end. But his pricing, I'll be honest with you, it was diabolical. There was games in there that you could pick up for 12 to 13 pound in CEXs. I'm talking about the Darius games. And he was selling them at 35, 45s. And that Samurai Showdown you see there. I mean, the last stop I checked, that was a four to five pound game in CEX. I think he was charging 25. I had to mention it as well. I'll be honest with you, I couldn't hold back and I, I wished him the best and I hope he did sell enough to justify his store on the day. But I saw many people, myself included, just have to walk away. Now, I know these tins got scratched up a lot back in the day, but at 70 pound, I can't see anyone buying that one on the day. Let's check in with my colleague. Let's see if he bought that Street Fighter fight stick with multiple games built in. Okay, what's your time with? Oh, your time's all spare. User manual, power, cable, USB cable, RSD cable, uh, is it? Is it space? nice. Take it out of the box of you. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, wow. Okay, try it. Just try, try a game then. Oh, it's <laughs> 
Now I'm quite pleased to say, as you can see here, he did pick one of them up and it looked really nice. Everything on it, he told me, is running smoothly as well and he ended up getting it at a really good price at £90. However, let's see what I picked up today. Now I picked up the Wonder Swan there at £15, couple of drink coasters as well as you can see here. Yes, I had to pick up that Robocop. I got it down to £7 and yeah, I had to pick him up. Croc, one I've been after for quite a while. I'm looking forward to the remake of that as well. Gorilla Strike on the PlayStation 2. Quite a rare one, you don't see it too often. And I've got it for £3. I've got The Last of Us Part 2 as well. Doorway to Darkness took a game off me. So that ended up being only £10. And Bomberman Land I picked up for £12. And yes, I did, right at the end of the day, find a Wii U game that you don't see too often. Rodia the Sky Soldier and it's a double disc version as well which I was really pleased with. I got that for £15 so yeah all in all not a bad day for me personally without having to spend a fortune. But as I said earlier in the video have these game markets peaked? Are too many people neglecting them now and looking to buy it online? I mean I'm not sure I know that the new ticketing system has definitely made it easier to get around such a market without it being so busy. But it's impossible not to think that there is something else going on as well at the same time. There's always good deals to be found at such markets, always, that's definitely the case. But there is definitely a tax on these markets. I don't know if the London one's any higher than others because at this stage I haven't been to many others something I plan on rectifying in 2025 so I can make a much fairer comparison. Anyway guys, thank you as always for watching the video. Like, share, subscribe and I'll see you next time.